All right, what's up, gang? Carlton Flowers here with Color Boss Custom Auto Body Shop. Back at it again with the video that I've been promised to show you how I do my sanding and buffing process. So I've got everything set up. In the last video, I showed you the things that I was going to use, and I have them all laid out right here. Here's my awesome 3M sanding block that I have an interface pad on that has Velcro on both sides, and that's what I attach the sanding sheets to, the sanding film. Flexible abrasive sanding film is actually what it is. And so this first one is the 400 slash 600 blue, and it has a range. Basically, you take these and you tear them apart and you use one. So I've got a couple of each because I'm gonna show you how I take two passes over the panel with each one of the sheets and I might need more than one. The second sheet is the yellow and this one is the 800 to 1000 grit, okay? And then the third one that we're gonna use is the orange and this is the 1200 to 1500 grit. And then the last one that I'm going to use is the 3M 1500 grit. Now 3M, they make all of these and theirs are specific. So you can get an actual 600, an actual 800, an actual 1000, they're exact. But the Smart brand, which is a little bit cheaper, these have that range where it's somewhere between 400 and 600, it's not exact. So we're gonna go ahead and set this up and then I'm gonna show you how I start this off where I'm just gonna very carefully open up the clear. And as you can see on here, let me get a better shot so I can show you what the um, actual clear coat looks like for right now. And you can, you're gonna see little spots here where I've already taken my little DA tool that I showed off in the last video with the one inch uh, sanding uh, paper and I hit the real big dirt spots just to knock those down right away to make the job a little bit easier. All right, so I'm gonna cut this off and jump right back and give you a close up of the surface before we start. Here we go. All right, here we are in close up mode. I've got the camera on the back setting and not the selfie camera so everything is backwards whenever I flip it around into selfie mode so I can watch what I'm doing. But here's a spot where I used my little nib sander that I bought from Amazon for $40. What a great buy, because usually those will cost you several hundred dollars. But looking at the surface, you can see it's shiny, but this is raw clear. And so we can see little dust nibs that are all throughout the clear. And it is shiny, but you're gonna notice the dull areas. And as I pass over the surface and show you the reflection of the light, you can see those dull areas where it shot a little bit dry, especially at the edges. So keep in mind, when we get to the end of this process, you'll be able to come back and compare that. There's where I took a little dirt nib up and you can see all the little bits of dirt and kind of small fish eyes. I didn't do too bad with the fish eyes, but there's a few that are on here. But as we scroll across the surface, you can see the dirt. So we're gonna go ahead and start out with the 400, 600, and I'm just gonna lightly open it up, not doing too much hard work. One thing I've learned is that if you go slow and take it easy, you'll actually get the job done quicker and better. So you have to slow down to go fast. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's get the party started with the 400, 600 grit. And as I was saying, I'm gonna go very slow across the surface and I'm not going to do a fast motion or press hard and dig in. I'm gonna be very easy with how I do this. Now you noticed over there, it's already nice and dull. I did the whole process on that side. So it's gonna be ready for the cutting compound and then the buffing compound. But we'll go through all of the steps right here on this panel, one at a time, so then we can do the buffing and cutting compound over the entire hood. So I'm gonna start right here at the edges and I'm not gonna press really hard. I'm just gonna go nice and light and easy in one direction. And so notice that you can see where it starts to turn white. That's where you're lifting up that clear coat. You're just breaking it open nice and easy. I used to go really fast like that and dig in. And the problem is when you go super fast like that, you're gonna dig grooves into your clear. You don't wanna do that at all. Now. As I'm taking this off, let's look at the bottom of the sanding pad. You see that? 
it's already picking up clear. And what I'll usually do is grab me a nice little uh, detailing rag and I'm gonna keep this clean so that we can still have plenty of bite. But this one pad should be good enough to get through the whole panel. So we're gonna continue on and just taking our time, watching the edges so that you don't break through because you don't wanna break through the edges and have to go back and redo a panel. And believe me, that sucks. Redoing stuff is no fun at all. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish opening this up and then we'll get a close up shot and see how it looks. Okay, so I've taken my first easy pass over the entire panel going in one solid direction and I just wanted to show you how much material see all the little clumps of the clear coat that's how much I was taking up just by taking those easy passes you saw how much work I was doing and it wasn't a whole lot so now what I'm gonna do is wipe off this panel so then we can get a good close idea of the defects the fish eyes the trash the dirt everything that is in there and then on the next pass I'm going to do a little bit more work. I will be still using that same slow motion, but now I'm going to work in each area until the entire surface is uniform. So now that we have taken that pass, do you notice how we can just see so much better? Every little fish eye, like look at this big fish eye right there. Here's a big fish eye right there. Look at that. Would you just look at that? And then we can even see places where there's a possibility of, say, say a sag or you'll see your runs. Everything is going to be really clear. Now, notice I stayed away from these edges. I'm going to do this by hand where I take an interface pad without the block. And I'm going to go in here very carefully so I don't bite into those edges and end up screwing up. Because if you bite through that, it means you're going to have to blend in color and re-clear coat the entire panel. We don't want to do that. So there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rest of this up. And then we will start with the second pass. And I think I'll still use the same pad. And by the time you get from here to there, you can tell the difference with that, um, with that piece of uh, flexible sanding paper, the sanding film. It starts to bite less and less. Um, but I'm going to go through it one more time. And then I'm going to change the film and put a fresh one on and do it one more time but being careful not to take off too much material and the goal will be to get it to where it's almost removing all of these defects but not all of them and i'll explain why on the next step but let's go ahead and take another pass and cover the whole panel okay here we go let's take that second pass and cover everything with a little bit more exertion but really still with the slow speed and being very careful not to take off too much material. Now, watch my motions here. Lots of material coming off onto the film. The slower you go, the more energy you have left, you'll wear out your arms a lot less quickly than when you go super fast like I used to do. So I find that I'm able to do a whole lot more work in one night going with the slow motion than going super fast. So that's another benefit of taking your time and not going bananas with this sanding motion. Okay. Another thing I'm watching very closely and I can see how well I'm doing because you can see the fish eyes and the dirt nibs start to disappear just a little bit. But I don't wanna to go too far and go to the bottom of those dirt nibs because we have the 400, 600 grit film which takes off more material. I wanna go about halfway through these fish eyes and dirt nibs and then I'm gonna change up to the 800, 1000 uh, sanding film, which means that it'll be a lot safer where I won't dig down and go too far into the clear. Because what I want to do is end up where I'm at the bottom 
of that dirt nib or fish eye where it's not completely down to the bottom of the clear. And when I shock this panel, I do a light dust coat at first so I can in let that dry and encapsulate any silicone particles that cause the fish eyes. And then each layer that I put on, I go really quick and somewhat light and I let that flash. And so that way you don't end up getting fish eyes that go all the way to the bottom of your clear. Okay, so I'm gonna flip the camera around and then get a close up of this little portion that I did right here. Look at all that material on the sanding pad. You see how much is coming off? That's a lot removed. So let me show you a close up of this and demonstrate what I meant about not sanding to the bottom of the fish eyes. Okay. All right, so here we are close up and now you can see a difference. See that fish eye there where I just lightly grazed over it and now we're at the point where I've got more uniform coverage across that panel. Now, before I wipe this up so we can see how that looks, I wanna draw a little demonstration for you. Now imagine that this is the surface of a panel that you're, you're um, painting, okay. It's kinda of hard to see that, but I think you get the picture. And let's say you put on this much clear. Now this is just demonstration purpose. A really deep fish eye is one that will go all the way down to the bottom of the clear and you can't fix that. You have to reshoot the panel. But what I do, I put on that light dust coat at first and then I put my layers on each one after encapsulating, let's say if you got a silicone particle right here, my first layer is gonna go over that and I'm gonna let it flash where it's not liquid, it's not wet. Because if you shoot on that wet, then that silicone particle is going to um, actually repel the clear with each layer that you put on. So when you do the next layer, if you don't do it right, then it'll dip down to that fish eye. And then each new layer you put in, it dips down all the way until you end up with a great big hole. So the way that I do this, I put on one light layer and it's encapsulated and you might have a small indention, but then the next layers are gonna go on top of that and leave you room that you can sand through uh, that fish eye. So what I've done, let's say this is the top layer of your clear and let's say this is a fish eye right here. What I've just done right now with the first level of sanding, I'm removing about that much, okay? And notice that there's still a little bit of that fish eye left. But then as I change down through the grits, the next one is gonna be a thinner slice like that. And then I'm gonna wait until the very end until I get to the bottom of that fish eye. And that way, I still got this much clear coat left because if you try to get rid of this fish eye on the first pass, you're gonna take off too much material and go through the bottom of the clear. Okay, so here's another close up of the sanding pad so you can see how much material that I took off. And now let's just wipe this up. And you'll notice that the fish eyes look a little bit different. You can still see them like this one here. You still see it, but as I run the light across, you can see that there's only a ring. You can see that the inside of it has been sanded. And that's because of the method of shooting that dry coat where it could encapsulate those particles. So on the next pass, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of this, and then I'm gonna come back with the 800-1000 paper, and then we'll start to take care of the rest of those fish eyes. So I'll shut this off real quick, get back at it, and come back when I've finished out the rest of this panel, and I might have to change out my pads and get a new one so I have enough bite, and then we'll start on the next level. And here's what it looks like after we made the second pass with the 400 slash 600 sanding film. And as you can see, there's some crisscross scratches in there. One thing that I forgot to tell you before is that I changed the direction on the second run. Actually, I changed several times. First, I go this way all the way across and then I come back and I go this way. And the reason why I do that is that when you sand in an X pattern, then you go against the grooves that are made. You not only flatten it out, but you can remove a little bit more material with less effort. So we are going to move forward and throw on, let's see here, here we go, the yellow sanding film. So let's put on that 800 slash 1000. And this is the Smart brand and go all the way across this panel. One other thing I will say is that on that second pass, the sanding film will last a lot longer, and I'll show you why. This is the one from the 
first pass and then this is what I was just doing the edges with but look at all the gunk on there so on the first pass you're getting that top layer of clear and you're breaking everything open and you get a lot more lumping and clumping but once you get over the whole panel underneath that when you hit it with the second pass it's a lot easier to keep the sanding film clean and it'll last a lot longer that first one you know it'll make it across the whole panel with that light uh, sanding motion with just the first one to break it open and then you'll go over the whole thing and it won't make it through the whole uh, panel but then on that second one I was able to finish from the first pass and then go over the whole thing again all right so let's jump on this 800 slash 1000 and take it to the next level We are now on the orange, the 1200 slash 1500 sanding film. And just look how smooth and creamy that it looks when I hit it with this. And I'm going nice and slow. I really don't have to press very hard with this and you can feel it bite. And when you're not trying to dig in and go bananas and you just kind of go with the feedback of what your sanding film was telling you, you know that you're taking up material besides the fact that we can see that white dust coming up as we sand through the clear but did you know that your hands your fingers are so sensitive that you can tell the difference between a one fifty thousandths of an inch change in the surface of uh any um in the surface of a surface. Okay, that was silly. I'm going to call the agency of redundant redundancies and report myself for saying that. Well, anyway, if your hands are bare, you can tell an irregularity down to one fifty thousandths of an inch. So with gloves on, it's probably not going to be that good. But the point is, you can really tell if you are careful and getting that feedback and feeling the resistance as you draw that sanding film across the surface. And that tells you how hard you need to press, how fast you need to go, and how much material that you're taking up. So we're going to go ahead and finish the orange, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the 1500 on the purple, and then we'll come back to the next stage, and I'll show you what to do when I finally start to use water. All right, so we're back again, and now you can see some water on the surface because I used water for that last layer of wet sanding using the 1500 grit 3M sanding film. And now I'm gonna show you my big secret. I bought a tool for $30 that's not even meant for this, but it works perfectly for this application. And what is it? It's a cheap jitterbug sander from Harbor Freight that runs like a Cadillac. Very low vibration, but it puts in the work. And I use this not only as a mini file sander for 80 grit sanding, for sanding down film, but also to wet sand using the 2000 grit. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cover the surface with water, and I've already done this side. It's already been hit by the jitterbug, so it's good to go. We're gonna spray this down, and sometimes I use a soapy water combination <clears throat> and that just helps to uh, lubricate and protect the surface and to lift up and suspend the particles. And that encapsulates dirt. And it also breaks up grease. So, here we go. I'm going to show you how I run this across using the jitterbug. And we need to kick it on there. Sometimes you got to give it a little help. There you go. You got an adjustable knob here. Okay, so 
basically I go ever so slight with the pressure, basically almost just using the weight because this is heavy and not mashing down. And then as I'm moving, I can see the surface tension of the water breaking because before I start, you can see it's beaded up over here. But then once I get this nice and smooth and creamy looking from lifting up the clear, it turns white and then the surface becomes smooth and you don't see the water repelling like it does over here, like it's hydrophobic. So that lets me know that I've gone far enough. Now, I'm gonna be careful on the edges. I'm gonna take my time, but I'm not gonna take off too much material. But the better job I do on the 2000, the easier it's gonna be when I get out the buffer to hit it with the cutting compound. You can take this to 3000 and even 5000 if you want. And the higher you go with the sandpaper, the easier of a job it'll be to buff. But I'm gonna go ahead and just stick with this 2000 and jump straight to the cutting compound. So let me finish this up. I'll be back and cut you on. Okay, what the heck, I decided to go ahead and get the DA, the six inch DA, and throw on the 3000 grit uh, 3M sanding pad. This sanding pad is kind of really thick. It's not just paper, but it has a thickness, see? And then you can stick that, it's a hook and loop, you can stick that to your interface pad. So I'm gonna go ahead and run over the, over the surface with the 3000 real quick. I did this side, but I'm gonna show you how I do this side, just to make sure that I've got this fully prepped to make the work easier for that buffing compound. Here we go. And now for the good part, it's time to use a buffing compound, cutting compound rather, and I'm going to show you exactly how I get this done in order to get that glassy finish. First of all, we're gonna start with my favorite buffing compound, or cutting compound rather, and here it is, Wizards Turbo Cut. Oh yeah, and you know the reason why I like this product so much and why it is leaps and bounds ahead of everything else out there on the market? It's because it smells so good. Ah, but be careful not to like squirt it up your nose when you're sniffing it because it definitely does not feel the same way than when you're just sniffing that cherry goodness. But it smells like cherries, man. The best smelling cutting compound known to man. Okay, so that's my cutting compound. And then I'm going to show you how I like to put it down. Some people like to do the little dots. Well, I don't. I don't like to do that. I like to use an applicator pad that's used for waxing, okay? A little polishing pad. So I'll squirt a little bit here, and I'll go on about a one square foot section, and then I will hit that section, and then do it again. Rinse and repeat. And I'll usually cover the whole surface twice with the cutting compound before I move to the next step with the buffing compound or polishing compound. So I need to go and find my wool pad and get on here because right now I've got the foam pad on and this is for polishing. But let me show you my handy dandy tool that gets this job done. This is a pneumatic uh, buffer, okay? <coughs> Variable <coughs> on the <coughs> control. <coughs> nice little holder arm here. And guess what? This is a Nico. I got this sucker on Amazon for $89 and yes, it looks, feels, and works just the same as the $750 brand name buffer. And the only difference is this one might be a little bit heavier, but I've been hitting this thing hard for a year and it does not stop. Just keep it oiled with your pneumatic oil and you're good to go. Okay, so let's see if I can find, I'm gonna pull off this pad and I prefer using the wool pad whenever you're using the cutting compound because the wool gets the job done a lot easier. So I'm gonna see if I can find where I put the pad. <laughs> oh, oops, I found it. Okay, here we go. Here's the wool pad. And then we just hook and loop right on. <coughs> there we go. And then I need to show you how I keep the wool pad clean. So now I gotta go find the tool. Hang on, I'll be right back. 
voila, I found it. And I got this on, I don't remember if it was Auto Body Tool Mart or uh, another tool website, but I only paid maybe $11.99 for this. And you can see it's got a wheel on one end, and then you've got this textured service surface with burrs on it on the other end. So you take your uh, buffing wool, which this has some old compound on it, and you turn it on. You roll that through, or you can use this side. <laughs> I'm choking from all the dust. And then that cleans it up. So every now and then, after every few passes, you need to clean it up. Okay, let's go ahead and put on some of our compound, and I'll show you one spot that I'll do with this. And one thing I can also tell you is that if you get up close to the surface, let me see if I can get a close-up shot. I'm going to go ahead and flip around the camera and show you what it looks like before I hit it with the buffer, where you know that you did it right. Okay, okay there's so the Wizard's Turbo Cut, just so you can see it straight way and not backwards but check out the light reflection and you remember what it looked like before it is almost looking like an exact reflection where it's not fuzzed out even though it's foggy you can see there's a big difference than when we started when we were looking at the diffraction because that surface was so varied okay so that tells you that you've gotten a lot of the work out of the way and you're ready to hit it with the buffing, the cutting compound. So let's hit it. Start on this side. Shake it up a little bit and put about eh, that much on. The more the better, so you make sure that you're not um, getting a dry spot. And one thing I can tell you, be careful when you're cutting with your compound because if you stay in one spot too long, you're going to heat up that compound and it's going to get gummy like bubble gum and it's going to rip the clear right off of the panel. It could rip and burn all the way through into the base coat because it can heat up that clear and the base and make it get gummy and sticky. So just word of the wise, be careful. Okay, so I'm just going to smoosh this around. Smoosh is a word. There we go. Good smoosing. It's about a foot, foot and a half. I shouldn't get too crazy. And you see I got plenty covering the surface. That's the way I like to do it. And then just note the speed that I use the buffer, keeping a good steady motion and watching what I'm doing so I don't burn through, and especially on the edges. And the trick with the edges is make it go this way where the, the buffer is cutting away from the edge and not into the edge. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not, but here it is. This is cutting into the edge. This is cutting away from the edge. All right, so let's see what direction we have, and here we go. Okay, you can already see that shine starting to come out and notice that I'm just going to go one little spot at a time. And then you'll also notice that I let up on that trigger when I was getting to these edges. And when you're feeling the grip on the surface, you know when to let up on that trigger. You notice that I go on and off. I don't just leave it straight on. That's not my way of doing it. Some people do, but I don't because that protects me from burning into the edges. And it also allows me to feel the resistance. So I know what that compound is doing and I know that it's not binding up on me. So then I just wipe it off like that and it's already looking like I could quit right there. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off the whole hood and then I'll come back and we'll show you what it looks like to put on that buffing compound and then we'll be done. All right, I'll be back. Oh. As you can see, it's really looking good, okay? I mean, I could stop right here because 
it's glassy and you can totally see your reflection in there but there's a few hazy spots if you've got a good eye and you can see it so we're going to go ahead and bump it up to the last level i'm going to stop after this level where i use the fine cut cleaner where it cleans up all of the cutting compound and then it polishes the surface so now i've got the foam pad on and this is a very soft foam pad they have some foam pads that are made for cutting compound but this one is made for the polishing and the level two compound so i'm going to use meguiar's which is another favorite product of mine sometimes i use their number 12 cutting compound but we're going to use the mirror glaze number two fine cut cleaner and on the scale here where you see how much grit that there is it ranks a number five they also make one that i like that's a number three but i went ahead and picked up a bottle of this today because i'm out of my 3m part two product that does the uh buffing so i'm going to show you how i do a little spot just so you can see and then i will cut the camera off and finish this and then come back and let you see the finished product <laughs> oh crap okay it's not good to hold the, <laughs> the buffer in your arm while you're trying to fool with your monkey with your video camera i couldn't get the cap off i had to take my glove off here Leave it to me. See, it's getting late now. It's like close to nine o'clock. This is New Year's Eve when I'm shooting this and then I'm getting tired. And so uh, when I start doing stupid things, it's because I'm tired. And I have a rule that if I do three stupid things in a row, I have to stop. I have to quit and go home. And so uh, that's stupid thing number one. All right. Now we got the dead burn lid off. So let's just pop a little bit on here. I don't like the fact that the smaller bottle doesn't have the squirt top, but oh well, we'll deal with that. So let's get us another clean applicator. We're not gonna use the same one with the cutting compound because I don't want that heavier grit on there when I'm doing this stage. So here we go, let's just smooth on. And you can see when you smooth it on, it's not as opaque and heavy white. It goes on a lot different. Okay, and now we'll grab the buffer and hit that spot and let you check it out. And you'll notice that I don't spend as much time on this as I do with the cutting compound because it's not as much work that has to be done. Here we go. behind that emblem okay so there you see uh it is even shinier in this spot and one thing that's good about the number two is when you have some spots that you missed on the first round you can get that with the number two compound so you don't have to be per perfect on your first run when you're using both all right i'm going to cut on out and i'll be back when i get it all done guys i am tired i'm so tired but we are officially done and as you can see, it's shining like a, a candied apple here. Um, you can just see that and what the reflection of the light looks like now in the surface. But this is uh, how good it looks after you hit it with that buffing compound. Um, the number three or the number five. I'm actually kind of liking the number five better than, than the uh, B compound. The A and B, A is cutting, B is for the buffing from 3M. So I think I'm going to stick with this Meguiar's uh, cutting or buffing compound number five. It is the bomb. So here we are. And as you can see, there I am, the reflection in the paint, in the clear coat. So now you know how I do this step by step. It's not a perfect per paint job and I didn't get all the body work perfect on this hood. It's not perfectly flat because we didn't want to spend a fortune. My customer had a budget and I promised him I would stay within that budget. But I think I over delivered on this. Um, and if you remember, I had to reshoot the clear on the whole car because I had a problem with dieback. And that's a whole nother thing I'll have to explain sometime. But I had to scuff it and re-clear the whole car. So that's why I went back and redid this wet sand buff and polish. But since the first time I did this, man, I've learned so much and I've upped my game. 
But that's all I got. I just wanted to share with you. And I know there's a million different ways you could do this. And there's people out there who could probably say, man, you did that all wrong. Why'd you do it that way? But if you'd like to suggest something that I did do wrong and tell me how I can do it better, I'm willing to listen and learn. So you can post it in the comments or if you have any questions about what I did here, hey, hit me up. So until next time, this is Carlton Flowers with Color Boss, custom auto body shop where you know how we like to do it. We just shoot it. <laughs>